It has power, finesse, and arguably the best adept style in the entire game. Welcome to my tutorial on the bow. Hey guys, this is Gaijin Hunter. What follows is my weapon tutorial from Monster Hunter Generations. And if you already know everything from it and you just want to jump to what are the changes in Generations Ultimate, about the new art, alchemy style, and valor style, jump to the timestamp in the description down below. If you're new to Generations or you want to have a refresher, please sit back and enjoy the entire video. The bow is by far the easiest weapon for Blade Masters to get into gunner weapons, so don't let the length of this video put you off. The ammo is infinite and overall it's pretty low maintenance. There is more than one control scheme, but in this tutorial, I'll be using Type 1. Now before we go into each style and the moves that you can do, there are four major concepts we need to cover. Shot types, critical distance, codings, and charging. First, let's look at the four different types of shots. Spread shot. Spread shots fire out in a spread, just like the name suggests, the middle arrow being the most powerful. Now each shot type has a level, but don't let that confuse you with the level of charge of the bow. The higher the level, the more arrows you get to fire in a single shot. This applies to all four different types of shots. The spread shot is great for monsters with a really wide span, like Gormagala or Arathalos. Heavy shot. Heavy is a new type of shot introduced in Monster Hunter Generations. It doesn't fly far and is pretty hard to aim with, but each shot has a natural part breaker meaning that it'll deal 20% more breaking damage to any part that they might hit. Damage-wise, they're slightly less powerful than the other shots, but once we get talking about the critical distance, you'll learn about its other selling point. Rapid Shot Rapid shots fire a straight line of arrows, the first being the most powerful. Since you fire arrows in a straight line, this is really good for small to mid-sized monsters, or for just doing focus attacks on weak points. For this reason, Rapid Shot is by far the most popular type of shot to use for all bow users. Pierce Shot Pierce Shot fires a single arrow that will hit multiple times as it flies through a monster's body. This makes it really good for large monsters and really bad for smaller monsters. One hit is pretty weak, but if you land all the hits as it goes through the body, it's actually really strong. The type of shot that you use really dictates your armor set, the skills, how you approach a monster. In almost all cases, I recommend that people try rapid shot first, as it works great against all monsters and is really powerful if you know how to aim. Concept number two, critical distance. For each type of shot, the optimal distance you want to shoot at differs. Shoot too close or too far away and you'll do less damage. So you always want to make sure you're hitting from the sweet spot, which we call critical distance. It's called critical because you'll do 150% damage if you shoot at the right distance. Shoot too close or too far away and you'll only do 100% damage, and too far away and you can do 80% and even as low as only 50% damage. Considering this, it could take you triple the time to kill a monster if you're shooting from the wrong distance. Luckily Capcom's made it very easy for us to know if we're doing it right. If you hit a critical distance, you'll get a yellow flash as well as a screen shake. Just the yellow flash means you're doing 100% damage and you're outside of your optimal zone, and anything less effect-wise means that it's even weaker. Let's take a look at the critical distance for each type of shot. The critical distance for a spread shot starts about half of a back hop away from the monster, so very close distance, and it extends to about 1.5 hops away. Because of this, you generally want to be using the Evasion Plus skills when using this type of shot. Note that the critical distance affects each individual arrow, so while some of those arrows may be hitting at critical distance, some off on the right or left hand side may not. The critical distance for heavy shots starts out the same as spread, so really close to the monster. Once the arrow starts to do a downward dive though, the entire remainder of the distance is considered critical, which means that you can fire this arrow from atop ledges or with an upward angle to do critical hits easier than the other shots. The critical distance for rapid shot is mid distance, which makes it really easy for blade masters to use. It's about one hop back and it goes to about 2.5 back hops away from the monster. Finally, the critical distance for pierce shot is mid to long distance, so about two to five back hops away depending on the level of pierce. Note that each hit that the arrow does is calculated by its distance, so if you're a little too far back, the first hit may be calculated at critical distance, but the remainder of the hits may not be. Concept number three, coatings. 
Now while each shot is unlimited and you don't really need to worry about taking items with you, there is one that you want to care about which is coatings. Each bow has a different list of the types of coatings that you can use with it, so make sure that you look at that when choosing a bow. I won't cover them all because they're pretty self-explanatory, but you have ones that apply poison, paralysis, or sleep attributes to your shots. The most important coating though is the power coating, which you should always be using. To apply a coating, cycle through your coatings by holding L and using X and B, and then just press X plus A to apply it. Level 1 power coating makes your shots do 35% more damage, so you can see why this is so important to use. Mid to late game, you have bows that can do the level 2 power coating, which does 50% more damage, which is huge. So definitely keep this in mind when choosing a bow. Similar to power coating, there is an elemental coating that gives 35 and 50% more elemental damage as well. Concept number 4, how charging works. The concept is pretty easy, just press and hold X to charge your bow, and release to shoot. As you charge, you can run around and look for an opening, but your stamina will decrease. Now each bow has anywhere from 2 to 4 levels of charge, but 3 levels is the most common for all the mid to end game bows. The types of shots that you'll do at each level differs, so make sure to check out the description panel of your bow to see what types of shots your bow will do depending on the level of charge. Here we have the final form of Teostra, which is hands down the best bow in this game. At a level 1 charge, which means you're just pressing X and releasing it right away, it does a level 2 pierce shot. At a level 2 charge, it does a level 4 spread shot. And at level 3, it does a powerful level 4 rapid shot. You'll generally just want to use the highest level shot for your main attack, especially because you're going to be charging. So, in this case, we'll be using our level 3 charge rapid shot, so we'll build our armor sets and our strategies based on that. Here's how powerful your shots scale according to the charge level. Notice that there is a level 4 charge, but only a few select bows in this game have it. Alternatively, there is an armor skill called Load Up that will unlock a level 4 shot for some of the endgame bows. However, it does take a while to charge up to level 4, so most players just focus on the level 3 shot as a result. Since you're always going to be charging up your bow, the armor skill called Focus is almost a top priority in this game because it'll help you get to your level 3 shot a lot faster and with using less stamina. Okay, now that we understand the difference between shot type, shot level, distance, and charging level, it's time to get started with the guild style. Hold X and release to shoot an arrow. Pretty simple. During the charge, you can move around freely, and you can press Y to evade out of it. The guild style has two types of special shots that you could do. Power shots. After you shoot an arrow, press A right afterwards to do a second follow-up power shot. The power shot counts as one level higher than the shot that you just did, so if you released a level 2 shot, the follow-up power shot is a level 3 charge. If the level 3 is the maximum shot that your bow has, it simply just does a second level 3 shot, which is still pretty crazy. It does eat at your stamina pretty hard, but it does allow you to do a lot of damage in one shot. Arc Shots While charging, you can press A to do an upward arc shot. At level 2, it's kind of mid-distance, and at level 3, it's long distance. You can see the area that it will hit if you press R during this. There are three types of different arc shots, and your bow will have a fixed type. Focus means that the arrows will land in a very concentrated area. Spread means it lands in a slightly larger area, so it's good for large monsters. And Blast is a single hit, but it will send your teammates flying, so make sure not to use this if you're online, or just be careful. The Focus type of Arc Shot is good for applying status ailments due to the number of hits it does. And all the Arc Shots will do a certain amount of exhaust and stun damage if you hit the head of a monster, but honestly, Arc Shots are not used that much, so I really don't think it's that important to cover. There is a new 5 slot armor skill called Special Shot Up, and this will give power and arc shots 20% more power, and for power shot that's pretty darn insane. Ok, back to the moves that you can do. Press A to do a melee attack. You can press A again to do a 2 hit combo. Now this is the only way minus one of the hunter arts that a bow user can cut off a tail, but that being said you really won't be using it that much. Press B while idle to do a back hop. One of the new moves in Monster Hunter Generations is press B right after a back hop and you'll do a back dive, which will put you immediately into a level 3 charge if you press X. 
Finally, press X after jumping off a ledge to do an aerial shot. The aerial shot is always going to be your level 2 shot for your bow, and it always counts as critical distance no matter how far away you were, and it does mounting damage. You can press X plus A during the jump to do a melee attack, but honestly, no one's going to use this. Okay, on to striker style. For striker, you'll give up the power shot, but you can equip 3 hunter arts instead of 2. It's hard to go aggressive without the power shot, but if you make good use of the hunter arts, especially if you use one of the deviant monster's bows, which charges your hunter arts faster, this might be a fun style for you to use. Aerial style. You'll give up both the arc shot and the power shot, but you do gain some new aerial shots. After doing the aerial vault, you can press A to do a downward shot. This does your level 2 shot as well, so you definitely want to make sure that you're using a bow that has a powerful level 2 shot if using this style. You can follow it up with a melee attack by pressing X plus A, or a normal shot by pressing X. However, I do find it pretty easy to miss with some of these aerial attacks. Finally, Adept Style. Arguably, this has to be the best version of Adept Style for any weapon in the game. You give up the new back dive as well as the arc shot, which isn't really a big deal, but you still have the power shot just like guild style. When you do an adept evade, press and hold X and you'll go instantly into a level 3 charge, and that's without any hit to your stamina as well, which is pretty darn insane. Also, because you don't have the arc shot, you gain the unique ability to do a power shot straight from the get-go. Just press A during the charge to do the power shot. This is good if you're only at a level 2 charge as a fast way to get off a level 3 charge, or if you're using the armor skill special shot up, it will do more damage, and if you don't have the opening to do both the shot and the power shot, just do a power shot and you'll do more damage. Hunter Arts Accelerate Rain is by far the most useful hunter art for the bow. For a limited period of time, you'll not only move faster, but you'll also charge your shots faster as well. For level 1, it only lasts for 30 seconds, but at level 2, you get it for a full minute, and at level 3, you'll get it for a full 90 seconds. Yes, it also stacks with focus, allowing you to do some serious damage. However, the skill doesn't charge up fast enough to be a replacement for focus. It's just a really nice addition. Trinity Raven. A mid to long distance attack that does massive damage. If you can time this out and have the right distance at the same time, you'll do a total of 199 motion value, which is insane. Blade Wire. The animation does take a while to do, so make sure you're not hit out of it, but for a limited period of time you'll shoot two arrows tied together with a wire, allowing you to do cutting damage. Just like Accelerate Rain, it lasts only for 30 seconds at level 1, but at level 3 it goes up to a more usable 90 seconds. You'll lose all elemental damage during these shots, so it's really more about just cutting off parts. The critical distance is the same as Rapid Shot, and here are the motion values for each level charge. And now for final thoughts. The Guild Bow is awesome. It can do both arc and power shots, and it has their really cool new back dive. Striker Bow, honestly, I really don't see the appeal. Now while it's nice that you get more hunter arts, no power shot really hurts. Aerial style I think is probably one of the weakest ones in the game. You have to fight really close distance, and gunner armor is naturally more weaker than Blade Master, so I do not think that the trade-off is worth it especially when you consider that it's really easy to miss with the aerial shots. Add up style is insane and works well on any monster. Being able to evade through anything and do power shots means that all the best time attack runs for bow are definitely add up style. Guild and adapt are both great choices depending on your playstyle. Changes. In aerial style you'll now do two shots from above. You can delay the input of that second shot allowing you to line things up a little bit better. So all together you can pull off three attacks in the air meaning that it's a really good style for mounting monsters. And even though the controls are a little funky, if you do the aerial vault with your weapon put away, if you press X A X, you can actually still do the triple attack from a vault even if your weapon was not out when you did it. For the hunter arts, the blade wire is now doing a lot more damage and is much better at cutting tails. The motion value at level 3 is now 13 with a 10% break bonus, which is literally double the strength of what it was in Monster Hunter Generations. Alchemy Style In this style you lose access to quite a bit. You'll lose access to the power shots, as well as when you do a back dive after an evade, you're not going to go into a level 3 charge, you're only going to go back into a level 1 charge. You can still use arc shots, but honestly those are not really the meta, I think power shots are far more useful. In the style, however, you can equip coatings faster than any of the other styles, so I guess if you wanted to go for like a support bow, 
you can add in Reload Speed Plus 1 to automatically equip coatings without any delay. For all that you lose, you do get access to the Alchemy Barrel, and you can use that without putting your weapon away by pressing R and Y after an evade. For the bow, the Shake 1 item is the Alchemy Coating, which if you equip it, your shots will charge your Hunter Art gauges faster than normal. Honestly, Alchemy Bow is kind of lackluster in my opinion, but hey, maybe someone will prove me wrong. Valor Style As with all the other weapons, you'll take on restrictions when you're not in Valor mode to gain new powers when you are in it. For when you're not in Valor, you'll lose the ability to do power shots, arc shots, and the back dive. The bonus though is that you get access to that new Valor Sheath, which you can hold by holding down the Y button. Your stamina will decrease as well as a little health, but if you get hit during it, you only take 15% damage and you'll automatically put your weapon away. During a Valor Sheath, you can hold down the X button to charge up a special new type of shot, up to 2 levels in non-Valor mode and 3 in Valor. It raises your Valor gauge a lot, so you're definitely going to need to get used to using this in order to get into Valor mode. But once you're in Valor mode, <laughs> oh man. Not only is the back dive restored as well as the power shot, but you can now do a second power shot after the first. For Valor, it's all about being brave, so if you stand still while you're charging your bow, it acts as if you have the armor skill focus on, but if you charge while you're moving, it is slower than normal. In Valor, your charging speed is just faster overall. Mix and focus with Valor, and oh my gosh, you can charge up the bow really fast. Check this out. Because you're going to be doing like a shot, power shot, power shot 2, uh, it is going to eat up a lot of stamina, so if you are using this style, make sure that you make some dash juice and other things to help you with your stamina loss. New Hunter Art This art is a little hard to understand, but all it is is a backwards evade attack, which gives you invincibility frames as you do that backwards attack, and afterwards you immediately go into a level 3 charge, and your next hit does plus 35% affinity. The hit as you do when you do the backwards evade does count as critical distance no matter where you're at, which is nice. Um, and it is just an easy way to get out of there, get into a shot, and really you know punish the monster with a good counter punch. Overall thoughts, the Valor style is absolutely bonkers and can be horribly abused, but Adept and now Aerial as well can be very interesting choices for the bow as well. Honestly, it's never been a better time to be a gunner. I know you guys have to make special armor and everything to order to use these gunner things, but if you check out my tutorials on the bow guns, you'll see all the gunner weapons are really good in Generations Ultimate. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Hit that like button if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, happy hunting.